So today we're gonna uh, we're gonna go over um, exponential function 2.5. Uh, so last time we talked about uh, rule of exponents. So you have the product rule. So when you multiply, you add the exponents. The quotient rule is when you divide to the same basis, you subtract the exponents. Uh, the exponent zero, it's always one. And the power rule is if you have exponent of exponent, you multiply them. And also I give you the negative exponent. There was another one. If I have a to the negative exponent, you flip it over, one over a to the n. This is the reciprocal, okay? So we did these rules last time. So what you're doing today, we're gonna to talk about exponential function. The exponential function looks like, um, I'm gonna write here, the exponential function looks like, um, I'm gonna write it, f of x is a function, you know that? It's a number with exponent x. Now, if the number is bigger than one, the function, the graph of the function is increasing. And if the uh, basis A is less than one, between zero and one, the function is decreasing. So I'm gonna give you the two different cases for increasing and decreasing. These are the two different cases of the base. And I'm gonna show you how the graph looks like, and then we're gonna do some transformations. We're gonna move that graph, and I'm gonna explain the transformations also. So what is the graph if A is greater than one, which means the number uh, with exponent X is bigger than one. That means it's like two, two to the X, three to the X, and so on. So if you have base greater than one, the graph looks like this. It's increasing, it's crossing the y-axis at one, and the x-axis is the horizontal asymptote, which means the graph is going very close to the x-axis, but you never cross the x-axis, okay? So this is how the graph looks like if the base is bigger than one. Now, if the base is smaller than one, so the case when A is between zero and one, and you see I don't include one, I don't include zero, because zero to any exponent is zero, so it's a constant, right? It's a, a linear function, it's a straight line. And also A equals one, one with any exponent is one, it's also a linear function, it's also straight line, so I'm not gonna go over that. So now when the base is between zero and one, like one half to the X or um, 0 0.3 to the X or something like that, uh, the graph looks something like this. So this is the graph of exponential function when the base is smaller than one, it's decreasing. So this is the graph is going close to the X axis again crosses the y-axis at one, the same y-intercept, uh, and it's decreasing. The graph, when you draw it left to right, is going, is going down, which means decreasing. So these are the two graphs for exponential function. Uh, so you have one of those two cases, okay? So the difference between those two graphs is the first one is increasing, the second is decreasing. That's the only difference. Uh, and they kind of, they have reflection across the y-axis. And that comes from the negative exponent. See here, negative exponent, if you have negative exponent, um, it's one over. So let's say if you have, I'm just gonna give you an example. If I have two to the x or two to the negative x, um, when we have negative exponent, you're gonna flip it out. It's gonna be one over two to the x, right? So one over two to the X, it's the same like one over two everything to power X. So what that means, that means the graph of two to the negative X is the same as the graph of one half to the X. So if you have negative in front of the exponent, that means you're gonna reflect the graph across the Y axis, okay? You're gonna flip it across the Y axis. So you have, I'm gonna use this symbol to, do, to, to 
to say that we have reflection across the y-axis. So this is a reflection. It's a horizontal reflection. Okay, so that's a reflection. Now, so these are some of the transformations we're gonna use. So negative in front of the X is a reflection across the Y axis. Now, if you have negative in front of the number, so let's say you have negative three to the X. So if you have negative in front of the number, that means you're gonna reflect the graph upside down. So that's gonna be horizontal reflection. I'm sorry, vertical reflection. Which means a, a reflection across the X axis, okay? So we're gonna flip it upside down. So these are the reflections we're gonna have in the graphs we need to graph. So you're gonna have a horizontal and vertical reflection, okay? Um, if it's negative in front of the number, you're gonna flip it upside down across the X axis. And if you have negative next to the X, in, negative into the exponent, then you're gonna do horizontal reflection, which is reflection across the Y axis, okay? So these are the first two transformations. Also, if you have plus or minus number outside of the function, that means, um, so let's write something like, And you have all of these uh, eight questions to, to graph it. Uh, so let's say I have plus or num number or minus number. So I'm going to write it like this. If I have function f of x, whatever is your function, like 2 to the x, 3 to the x, 5 to the x, doesn't matter. And if you have plus number, I'm going to put plus... Um, M number, that means you're gonna shift, you're gonna move the graph up. You're gonna shift it M unit up. If you have F of X minus M, subtract number, you're gonna move the graph down, okay? So you're gonna just take the graph and just shift it down, okay? So that's what you have now. If you have number inside, so if it's half X plus N, I'm gonna just use different letter. In this case, what's happened is it's, it's inside next to X, which means horizontal. So you're gonna move it to the left, okay? And if you have F of X minus number, you're gonna move it to the right. Okay, so these are the basic transformations we're going to use. And uh, you can use um, these symbols, errors, or you can, instead of that, you can just write, uh, you can move it up, you can move it down, it's the same. This is left, and this is right. Okay, so you can use just this. Okay, so these are the transformations we're gonna do. So what you have to do, you're gonna have given a function and you have to find what type of transformation you're moving. And also um, describe with word the transformation from the base graph. So this is the base graph. So if I look at number one, the base graph is 4X. So now let me ask you, what type of graph is 4X? Is it increasing or decreasing? That means is the base, the base bigger than one or smaller than one? It's bigger than one, it's, it's increasing. Than these two cases, that's right. So it's bigger than one. So that means the graph of the function is gonna be increasing, right? So this is the case you're gonna have, right? And now let's see what's happened with this graph. So have this graph increasing, crossing at one, x-axis is the horizontal asymptote so now let's look at the we're going to look at this function here what kind of changes you have with four to the x so you have plus five next to the number and you have minus four outside so plus number next to the x what that means 
we're gonna move the graph. I think it goes to the left. To the left, so I'm gonna write left, and what else? And minus four means? It's gonna go down. It's gonna go down, okay. So let's write it like this. So it's gonna be left with five to the left and four down, right? So let's do it like that so it's more clear. So I'm gonna write five to the left and four down, okay? So that's what you need to write for all the questions here. Um, so if I go to the number two, again, the base function is bigger than one, right? So it's gonna be also, uh, it's gonna be increasing. I'm just gonna write increasing function. And let's see what kind of transformations we have. What we have around three, three to the X. So three it's to a the negative. Front, it's a negative in front, right? So what is the negative in front? What the negative in front means? It's an inverse, I think across the vertical. It's a vertical, that's right. It's a vertical reflection, yes. And this negative seven, what negative seven means? Negative seven outside of the function. I think it's down. Absolutely, good job. It's gonna be down, yes. Okay, so that's the transformations you have. You're gonna flip it upside down and you're gonna move it seven units all the way down. Yes? Everybody get that? Okay, so let's see how the graph is gonna look for this one. So if I wanna move this graph, the one I have here, uh, when you move it down with seven down, so instead of, I'm gonna do, this is my X axis and this is my Y axis. So instead of uh, X axis is my horizontal asymptote, I'm going to have at negative seven my horizontal asymptote, right? Moving everything with seven down. And then you have also to reflect it, right? Flip it upside down. So usually if you just move it down, you're going to cross the y-axis at negative six, right? But when you flip it upside down, so technically... Um, this is what you have so far, right? When you shift it down, it's gonna look like this, yes? But we have to also flip it upside down. So technically your graph is gonna cross at negative eight and it's gonna look like this. Yes? So the green one is gonna be the actual graph of Everything negative three to the x minus seven. Okay, so everybody understand what's going on? Uh, how'd you get to negative eight? Okay, because from negative six to negative seven is one. And when you flip it from negative seven, one down is negative eight. Got it? Where'd you get the negative six from? Because you're crossing the y-axis at one. And when you go from one, seven units down, it's gonna be at negative six. Okay, so it's always gonna be one. Yes, you always cross here what I say here. When you have increasing, you cross at one. When you have decreasing, you also cross at one. Okay, just making sure. Yes, okay. Okay, so everybody understand the graph? Okay, let's go ahead and just do like one or two more. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go to number seven because I have another letter here, A, E. Number seven and eight, they have E. What is E? E, it's an irrational number like pi and the value of E is about 2.7. So in exponential logarithmic function, E, it's a number they're using in science a lot. 
And that number E, it's, uh, it's a number like a pi, it's called Euler number. And the value of E is 2.7. And there are many numbers after that, which continue forever and they don't have repeating. So just keep in mind, E, it's a number about 2.7. So whatever you see e with exponent x, you know that e has a value about 2.7. So what is going to be the graph of e to the x? Is it going to be increasing or decreasing? Increasing. Increasing. Good job. It's going to increase because 2.7 is bigger than 1. Yes? OK. And then let's look what kind of transformations are here. So you have to add one to the x and also you have to add two outside so when you add one next to the x where you're gonna move the graph one to the where it's gonna be horizontal is it to the left or to the right the left to the left good job one to the left and this plus two is gonna be what two where two up so you're going to move the increasing graph one unit to the left and two units up. And that's going to be the graph of e to the x plus one plus two. OK, we don't have reflections here. OK, let's go ahead and do the next one, number eight. So in number eight, we have e to the x again. So it's increasing again. The same graph. Now, what kind of transformations you have? You have negative in front and you have plus five. So negative in front means you're going to flip it upside down. And that plus 5 means 5 units up. OK? Everybody understanding this? Do you guys want more? You want to do some more example or you got it? I would appreciate uh, one more example. OK, let's do more. Or we can just finish all of those. So number three, let's finish all of those. Number three. We have two to the X, which is increasing function, right? And what kind of transformations you have? We have X minus four and also minus six. So that X minus four, minus four next to the X means four units to the right, yes? And this minus six means six units where? Down. Down, that's right. Okay, let's go ahead and do number four. Number four, we have five foot exponent x, which is also bigger than one. So that means we have increasing function. And let's see, here we have more transformations. We have, um, what you have, you have negative in front. You also have minus four next to X and you have plus five outside. So first the negative in front means you're gonna flip it upside down, yes? Then minus four means you're gonna do four where? To the right, and you're going to do five up. Okay, that's all. And then you have two more where you have 10 to the x. 10 is also very special base. 10 to the x, uh, it's used in, uh, in uh, engineering. Um, so uh, 10, uh, you're going to talk about logarithms next time. And base 10 and base e. So this is a very common use base, okay? Like scientific notation. If you know scientific notation, um, they're using 10. So in, in uh, applications where you have really huge number or really small number, we're using, uh, we're using um, engineering notation. And uh, that's why you're using 10, the base 10, and also E in science. Okay, so uh, in medicine. Okay, so let's go ahead and do uh, 10 to the x. Obviously, it's increasing. Let's do the transformation. So you have x minus 2, subtract 2, and also minus outside. So this minus 2 is going to move the graph 2 units where? If it's minus, 
is going to be to the right. And minus five means five down. And then the last one we have, it's we have negative in front and we have minus three in the end. So that minus in front means you're going to flip it upside down. And also you're going to do three units down. You're going to move it down. Okay. So these are pretty much the transformations. Uh, we're going to do uh, also equations. We're going to solve equations for x. You're going to have equation with exponents and you're going to solve it. You're going to find x. So most of the equations we're going to do today, they're going to be easier. Next time we're going to, um, so here we have the same basis or the same exponents. So uh, when you have equations like this, we're going to do kind of shortcut. So when you have 10 root exponent, 10 equals 10 root exponent. See, all of those are the same. 6 root exponent, 6 root exponent. Uh, so this is one type of equation. So number 9 to 12, we have the same basis already. And then the other type of equations is when you have the same exponent, exponent 3, exponent 3. So those uh, type of equations, well, you're just going to solve it in different ways, which is also shortcut. So let's see um, what else we have. We have also equations where you have to use the property of exponents and you have to get the same basis in both sides. Sometimes you have to factor out something, but pretty much these are shortcuts, okay? Uh, and next time you're going to solve equations where you don't have the same basis in both sides and you're going to solve that type of equations using logarithms, okay? But today is going to be easier. So this is how you do those. Now, if you have the same basis, 10 root exponent equals 10 root exponent, just cross out the basis and you're going to solve the exponents equal to each other. Because the basis are the same, in order this equation to be true, the exponent also have to be the same, right? So technically you have to solve 7x plus 4 equals 4x plus 5. That's all. Now, what type of equation is this? It's a linear equation. You just have to get x in the same side, numbers in the other side, and get x by itself. So I'm going to subtract 4x. I think you misput it. It's supposed to be 7x minus 4. Yes, thank you. It's a minus 4, yes. Thank you so much, yes. OK, that's right. Thank you. So you're going to subtract 4x. And you're also going to add 4 in both sides. And then this cancel and this cancel. So you get 3x equals 9. Then you're going to divide by 3. And you're going to get x equals 3. So that's all what you're doing. You're going to solve only the exponents equal to each other. OK, everybody get that? Okay, let's do number 10 the same way. 10 root exponent, 10 root exponent, cross out the 10 and you have quadratic equation here. Now, when you solve quadratic equation, let's do green. When you solve quadratic equation, you have to move everything in the same side. So I'm gonna subtract 2x and I'm gonna subtract 8. So I'm gonna get x squared minus 2x minus 8 equals zero. Now, this equation, you can factor it. Uh, what times what is negative 8 and add up to negative 4? So that's x minus 4 and x plus 2, right? Because negative 4 times 2 is negative 8, and negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. So you factor it. And then after that, you solve the first factor equals 0, the second factor equals 0. So you're going to get x equals 4 when you add 4 in both sides to solve it, and x equals negative 2, opposite of it. OK? So that's how you do those. You just solve the exponents equal to each other, and then you solve whatever type of equation you get. If it's linear, you solve the linear. If it's quadratic, you solve the quadratic. OK? Now let's look at the next one, number 11. You have 6 root exponent equals 6 root exponent. Again, cross out the, the basis. And you solve x squared equals 5x minus 4. And again, I'm going to subtract 5x and I'm going to add 4 to get it equal 0. 
because we have equals here, right? So we're gonna get x squared minus 5x plus 4 equals 0. So now tell me how you factor this. What times what is positive 4 and add up to negative 5? Negative 4 and negative 1. Good job. That's right. And then you solve both of those zeros, which is just flip the sign. So it's going to be x equals 4 and x equals 1. Okay, so it's really easy to solve equation with exponent when the exponents are already the same or the basis are the same. Um, <clears throat> now, the next one, the same idea. You're going to cross out the 8 and 8, and you have to solve... 2x squared equals 16x. Again, I'm going to subtract 16x. So I'm going to get 2x squared minus 16x equals 0. And I'm going to factor it. So how you factor that? You're going to factor out 2 and x. And you get x minus 8 equals 0. Then you're going to solve this 0 and this 0. So the first one gives me x equals 0. And the other one give me x equals 8. Okay, any questions so far? Do we have to use like the quadratic formula um, eventually? Use quadratic to... form yes, you can use quadratic formula if you want. That's fine when you solve quadratic. But all these, the three equations we solve quadratic, they're factorable. So when you factor, sometimes it's, I mean, most of the time it's easier if you can factor. Okay. You can use the formula if you like, yes. <clears throat> okay? Will we, will, we, will, we, will, we be, will we be put into situations where we have to? Like there's certain numbers that aren't factorable? Uh, if, it, if they're not factorable, yes, you have to use the formula. But I don't know if you're going to be put in that situation. I don't know exactly. Uh, I don't know what type of questions you have in the homework, but... Try factoring first, okay? Okay, uh, any other questions? Everybody and say how to solve those equations? Yes, sir. Okay, let's go ahead and do the next one where you have equation where the exponents are the same. So when the exponents are the same, you do the same. You just cross out the exponents. Or it's kind of taking cube root or the other one is gonna be taking fifth root, see? Exponent 5, exponent 5. So you can get rid of this, just cross it out. Because the exponents are the same, the bases have to be the same, right? So you're solving the bases equal to each other. So what you need to do is just solve x plus 4 equals 3x minus 10. And then just get x by itself. I'm going to subtract x in both sides. And also I'm going to add 10. So x cancel, 10 cancel, and you got 14 equals 2x. You're gonna divide by two both sides, and you're gonna get x equals seven. Okay, so uh, we're solving this equation when you cross out the bases and then solve what is left, okay? So the next one is the same way. You're gonna just cross out the exponent five, and you're gonna solve uh, 2x minus 7 equals x plus 1. How you solve it? You subtract 1x in both sides and you add in 7. And this cancels, so you get x equals 8. Okay, so that's all. You just Cancel the exponent, cancel the basis, whatever it's equal, and solve the other one. Okay, the next one here, the next type of equations we're going to finish today is when you have to use the property of exponents, okay? So now, the, remember the power rule? When you have yield exponent, exponent, what you do in those two numbers, you're going to multiply them, right? You're going to multiply those numbers. Now, over here, the same way. When you have exponent of exponent, you're going to multiply the exponents, yes? 
So I'm gonna simplify something before you get e root exponent equals e root exponent. And this is the same way, e root exponent exponent, you multiply those two, okay? Now down here on 18, 19 and 20, you're gonna use the rule for multiplying. So when you multiply, you add the exponents, right? Again, when you multiply, you're gonna add the exponents. And again, over here, add the exponents. Here you have invisible one, right? So here you're gonna multiply the exponents. And 18, 19, and 20, you're gonna add the exponents. So we're using the property of exponents. So this is how you do it. So let's do the first one, number 15. So when I multiply, I'm gonna get e to the six equals e to the x, okay? Now I already have e root exponent equals e root exponent. Now you can cross the e and you're gonna get x equals six, okay? That's all what you're doing. You're just getting e, I mean, getting the same exponents and then solve it the same way we just did, okay? Let's do number 16. Again, we're gonna multiply. It's gonna be e, when I multiply x times five, it's gonna be five x equals e to the x squared. Again, cross out the e because they're the same. And you're gonna solve, I'm gonna subtract five x. So it's gonna be x squared minus five x equals zero. How you solve it, you're gonna factor out x and I'm gonna get x minus five inside equals zero and solve both of those zero and you're gonna get x is zero and x equals five. So these are my two answers, zero and five. So the goal is always to get the same basis. Okay, the next one, the same way, we're gonna um, multiply two x times x, so that's gonna be e to the two x squared equals e to the 15 plus x. Again, crossing the e, crossing the basis, and also I'm gonna subtract x, subtract 15 to move everything the same side. So it's gonna be two x squared minus x minus 15 equals zero, okay? So here, how are we gonna factor this? Or you wanna use the formula for this one? How are you gonna solve this? What do you guys wanna do? The formula. The formula, okay. So if you want the formula, I'm gonna write the formula here, negative b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac, everything over 2a. So this is the formula we're gonna use. So first we have a, b, and c. So a is two, b is negative one, and c is negative 15, right? a, b, and c. And then you're gonna plug them into the formula. So it's gonna be negative, b is negative one plus minus. We have b squared, which is negative one squared minus four a and c over two times a. Now negative and negative, it's positive one plus minus now let's do the square root. So you have negative one square is one. I'm gonna write here one. Now negative and negative it's plus, um, two times four is eight, eight times 15 is 120. And when I add one plus 120 is 121. Square root of 121 is what? 11 over four, right? Now, when I do plus, I'm gonna get one plus 11 over four, which is 12 over four, which is three, right? Okay, 
And then when I do minus, it's gonna be one minus 11 over four. It's gonna be negative 10 over four, which is negative five over two. So these are my two answers. Everybody understanding this? So I get three and negative five over two. Okay, questions? Okay, now we're going to the last three questions. We have to use the, uh, the product, see this is the rule we're using, the, the product rule. Okay, when you have exponent of exponent, you add them. I mean, exponent times, exp so before you use product rule, now uh, power rule, we're gonna use product rule now. So we're gonna add the exponents. So the first one, number 18. So for number 18, you're gonna get three with exponent x plus four equals three with exponent three x squared. Cross out the three, the base is three, you're crossing it out. And you need to solve, I'm gonna solve, put three X squared in front and then subtract X, subtract four equals zero. Okay, so this is what you have to solve. Now, how you solve it? Again, you can use the formula or you can factor it. Okay, I can factor this like three X and X. Um, like that. See negative four times negative one is negative four. Three X times three X is three X squared. Now when I multiply these two is four X, negative four X. And when I multiply these two is positive three one, three X. So three X minus four X is minus one X, right? That's what you're gonna get in the middle. So this is how you factor it. And then you're gonna solve each of the factors equals zero. So I'm gonna get x equals negative one here. And the other one is gonna be x equals four over three. Because you're gonna add four and you're gonna divide by three to get x by itself. Okay? Any questions here? Everybody understand how we solve it? Okay. Then you're going to the next one where we're gonna use the same property. We're gonna use the product property. So we're gonna add those two exponents. So we're gonna get two x squared equals two 12 x minus 32. So we're gonna cross out the basis two and you're gonna move 12 x and gonna move 32. So it's gonna be x squared minus 12 x plus 32 equals zero. Now, what does what is 32 and add up to negative 12 is gonna be minus, right? So X minus what? What does what is ne negative, a positive 32? It's gonna be four and eight, right? Yes, ma'am. Four times eight is 32, positive and add them negative, okay? So you're gonna get X equals four and the other one is gonna give me x equals eight. So that's how you do those. And we're gonna have one more to go. Okay, the last one we have is uh, number 20. So again, I'm gonna add see nine half invisible one exponent, right? So I'm gonna get nine to exponent x plus one equals nine with exponent two X squared. So always remember you have to get the same basis first and then you cross them out. 
So from here, I'm gonna start with two X squared. I'm gonna subtract X and I'm gonna subtract the one equals zero. And then from here, we can factor also, or you can use the formula, doesn't matter. Uh, this one factors like two X and X. So let's see, it's gonna be one and one, but which one is minus, which one is plus, let's, no, one should be plus, yeah. Uh, so this should be plus, right? Because this is positive one X and this is negative two X. So one X minus two X is negative one X, okay? So that's how you factor it. And then you're gonna solve each of those factors equals zero. So the first one is gonna be X equals minus one. We're gonna move the one over and then divide by two. And the other one is just switch negative one to positive one. Okay, so that's how you do those. Any questions? Everybody understand this? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Questions? Yes. Okay, so for this number uh, nine in your homework, um, it's a little different because you don't have youth exponent equals youth exponent or the exponents are not the same. So in this case, you have to factor. And what you're gonna factor is the, um, you're gonna factor out E with exponent. So you're gonna, because both of those have youth exponent and you can also factor what else? You can factor X also, right? So you're gonna factor out X and E to the negative six X. And then what is left? Uh, I'm gonna use this term first. From this term, what is left? X and from the other term, you have left minus six, right? So we're factoring equals zero. Now, when you factor it out, you can solve this zero, you can solve this zero, and this E with exponent is never zero. Because remember what is the graph of E to the exponent, whatever is the exponent, right? This negative means you're gonna flip it over. But E to exponent is increasing, right? So when you have increasing, graph. When you flip it, because the negative means you're going to flip it, it's going to look like this, right? Now, equals zero means crossing the x-axis. And we know that the x-axis is the horizontal asymptote. That means the graph never going to cross the x-axis. So that means the e to the negative 6x never going to be zero. So that's why you don't take this, you just can cross it out, it's not zero, it's something else, okay? So what you need to do is just solve x equals zero, that's my first answer. And here I'm gonna put not equal zero, never gonna be zero. And then when you solve x minus six equals zero, you're gonna get x equals positive six. So these are the two answers you're gonna use, okay? I'm gonna put zero comma six. Okay, everybody understand that? And let's check it. Yes, that's correct. Yes, so you're gonna factor it out to solve it. Okay, now the next one, I wanna go over that also, number 10. So here we have given, it's kind of application. We have number of books uh, in a community college library increase according to this formula, this function. So here they give me the function so this is the function, the books equals, and the function have E with exponent, right? Now, T is measured in years. How many books after uh, the library you have after eight years? So that means when T is eight, how many books are gonna be there? So what you need to do is just plug it in eight into this formula and then use your calculator. So what you need to do is the books after eight years are gonna be 7,200 E with exponent 
point zero three times eight. And this have to go in the calculator. So let me show you when you go to symbol up, you're gonna go to symbol up calculator and you're gonna plug it in exactly what it says there. Okay, so I'm gonna plug it in seven two zero zero and then you're gonna just press E in the keyboard, E lowercase E, and then you're gonna press exponent here, this one X to the box, and then you're gonna put 0 0.03 times eight. So that's all what you're doing, just gonna put it like that. And see, you have decimal number, but let's see what it says. It says, how many books, so you have to round to the whole number, okay? Because we're talking about a whole book, right? So looking at this, see the number it's 915, 2.99 and so on, right? Because then you're gonna round to here, the first digit after the decimal is bigger, so I'm gonna add one. So they're gonna be 9,153 books. And let's see if they have it in the answer here. One fifty three. there you go. For some reason, this looks different. <laughs> okay, oh yeah, when you put the decimal, it's exactly like 9,153. Okay, everybody understanding that? Any questions? And you can check it if you want. Oops. Let's check it. It's correct. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the last one, which is similar. Uh, but here they're talking about uh, the number of reports of a certain virus has increased um, since 1960. Uh, the current number of cases can be approximated using the function. So here again, we have given a function, okay? So this is the function, 2007 EUT exponent, right? T is the number of years since 1960. So here we start counting from 1960. So estimate the cases in year 2010. So the T is gonna be from 2010 you're gonna subtract when you start counting and that's gonna be the T, okay? That's gonna be the time. Uh, so what is that? 50. 50 years? 50 years. So T is gonna be 50 years, that's the T. That's what you're gonna use for T. So I'm gonna plug it in in this formula. So it's gonna be 207 E with exponent point. Now be careful here, you have 0 0.005, two zeros, and then 50. So this is what you need to plug, plug it in web assign. I'm sorry, symbol up. Okay, so I'm just gonna change the number in front is 207 and then 0 0.0. 0, 0.5 with exponent, I'm gonna change this to 50. That's what you have, right? And let's see. Okay, so this is the number we got. I'm gonna write this number down. Uh, so the number we get is 265.5. Three two six, and let's see how they want us to round that number. So estimate, okay, so I need to round to the nearest number, right? The whole number, how many cases, right? So I'm gonna round to the whole number again. So I'm gonna look about, uh, after the point is seven. So I'm gonna add one to the five. So it's gonna be 266 cases. And which one is that? That's C. 
And when you check it, it's right, okay? So pretty much that concludes the lecture for today. And we went over everything we need to know for this week. Um, if you guys have questions, let me know. Okay, good job.